give a uh, just a prophetic introduction, and I ask my brothers to put it on the screen. This is a passage of Scripture that I know will speak to your heart. Here's what God is saying. This is what God says, folks. This is what God says. When God says something, we better be listening. This is what God says, the God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through the pounding waves. This is what God says, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies. And let me tell you right now, God is God. And he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Here's what God says, the God who controls the armies, the God who controls war. They lie down and they can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. All right? Forget about, listen to this, folks. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to discard? Are you ready to lay off? Are you ready to put behind you? Are you ready to cast away? everything that don't belong to us on our journey. There's some things God wants you to get rid of. Let me tell you this right now. When the horse is dead, dismount. There's no use beating that old horse anymore. And some of you need to know that today. We're moving into a new year. We're moving into a new day. I am a believer. And I believe God, and I believe with God nothing is impossible. Here's, let's get the rest of this. Be alert. Be alert. Be present. How many of you are present here? Are you really here now? Or are you still kind of climbing the hill or still worrying about, oh, you forgot to turn the stove off? Come on. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? Here's what he said. There it is. I'm making a road through your desert and rivers in your wilderness. Here's what he's saying. I'm I'm, I'm doing something brand new. Come on. Let's go to the next line here, brothers. Amen. Is that all you're going to give me? Go to, come on, let's make, go to verse 20. There we go. You can't do it? All right. But here's what he said, I'm making a way for you. I am giving you a a place even, I'm not, listen, the wild animals will say thank you. I mean, that's all the people around here that you think a little wild. Listen, (laughs) they're going to thank you. There's going to, listen, people around you in shallow, God is doing something that's going to change the whole outlook of this house. And God changing the direction of this house in an awesome way. Not that what has passed has not been good, but this is getting gooder. Amen. He said even the coyotes and the buzzards are going to say thank you. Because I provided water in in your desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth. Listen to this. Keep on going, brother. Put the rest of it up. Water for the people I chose. Amen. The people I chose. One of the texts says, these are people that I've made, I have custom made to praise me. Now let me say this to the house. We, God is saying to us today, I'm not going to change your location. I'm going to change your environment. Amen. Listen, there's always something about situations that come up. We want to run. We want to move. We want to go. No, God said, stay where you are. I'll change your environment. I'm not changing your location. You're in a dry place. He said, I'll put a river there. I'm not talking about a little trickle. I'm not talking about a cup. I'm not talking about a well. I'm not talking about just a spring. I'm talking about a river in your wilderness. And it, you need direction, God said, I'll build you a highway with GPS. I'm not, come on, you can't get lost on this thing. It's, it's God's creative moment for this house. I'm a believer, are you? All right, now, I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 60, and I want to read to you from the Amplified. But before I do, I want to tell you about my prayer 
for you this morning. Listen carefully. Here's my prayer. Is there a decision? Is there a decision that I need to challenge people to make in this service as a result of the message God's given to me? Folks, your decision determines your destiny. All right? Now, I want to talk about two important decisions. The first one is the big, I call it the big D. Okay? That is your major decision to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a born-again believer, or, you're, or a has-been, or maybe you've become unplugged somewhere, I don't know what your situation is, but I want you to be connected to Jesus, first of all. That is the most important thing. Are you with me? The second D is a little D. This is the decisions that's going to change things in your life. I'm challenging you to make changes in your daily walk, in your prayer life, in your expectation, and your witnessing. Are you really sharing Jesus with somebody on a regular basis? That's all God's kept you here for. God's whole purpose. Listen, if God just wanted to take you to heaven, he'd take his hand off you for five seconds on 580, and you'd be in glory. <laughs> See, God has kept you here to be a witness. God's never left this earth without a witness, and we are his witnesses, you and I. And that means to your neighbor, that means to the grocery man, that means to the barber, or the guy at the garage that fixes your car, wherever you are, or in your office, or in school. You are to be a witness. Are you hearing me? That's my prayer for you today. And when we get through, we're going to make a decision on that. Now, here's what God said to, for me to share with you today from Isaiah chapter 60. And uh, listen to these powerful words. See, the enemy has been trying to put your light out. The enemy has been striving to dim your influence. But God says in Proverbs 11, 11, because of the influence of the righteous, a city is exalted. Now, we're talking about Oakland. We're talking about the city where God planted you. You are the light of this community. Amen. Don't forget that. And God wants your light to shine. And please, let me just tell you one more time. If you're a Christian, please inform your face. Amen. Some of you don't like that. You don't think I see you, but I do. And I can see Jesus on your face. I can see Jesus on anybody's face. When I'm walking around, I'm looking for the fingerprints of Jesus. I want to see if Jesus has been at this house. I want to see it. I'm talking about these houses we live in, okay? Now, here's what he said. Isaiah 60, and I'm reading from the Amplified because it agrees with my doctrine. All right. But let me, let me back up a little bit first before I get to Isaiah 61 and 1. In, when we went to Budapest, Hungary a few years ago, incidentally, I'm having an enormously good time writing my chronicles. And I'm having, I'm writing in Sister Violet, I'm sorry, but you've taken up an awful lot of that book. You, right here. Because, <laughs> listen, Shiloh's an incredible part of my life, and I couldn't get around it. It's just everywhere. Every time I turn around, there you were, all of you people. And, uh, but anyway, <laughs> I better get, get back to Budapest. When the Lord sent us to Budapest, and uh, we went to that city. God gave me a passage from Jeremiah 29, verse 7. He said, I'm sending you to this city, and I want, listen, I want you to pray for the peace of this city. For in the peace of this city, so shall you have peace and prosperity. Now, God said this to Israel as they were being taken captive into Babylon. Nobody likes to go to Babylon, but God said, I want you there, and I put you here, and I'm going to make you a blessing, and in the blessing of this city, you're going to be blessed. 
Remember that, all right? Here's what God says now from Isaiah 61, 60, verse 1. Arise from the depression. Arise. Come on, church. We have to get up out of it. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. I talked to a person the other day, and I said, how are you doing? He said, well, under these circumstances... (laughs) <laughs> I said, what in the world are you doing under them? <laughs> Amen. God didn't put you under them. He put you over them. Listen. Arise to a new life. Shine. Be radiant. <laughs> Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. If his glory has risen upon you, don't you try to cover that glory. Don't you put a mask on. You are what you are by the grace of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I want you to present your bodies to the Lord as a living sacrifice. And he said, quit assuming, quit assuming an expression that doesn't come from within you. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a child of God. You are redeemed. You are the light of this world. Jesus Christ said so. And if we are that, then let's get our light up on a candlestick and don't put it under a bushel and don't hide it under the bed. That's what Jesus said. And now here's what he said. I want you to rise and shine and be radiant. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen on you. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen on you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. I read yesterday an article that said about 139 nations in this world right now out of 195, 139 nations are persecuting Christians. Come on, there's something wrong with this picture. It's time for the saints of God to stand up, rise up, and shine. Declare the glory of God. Never be ashamed. These people tell you don't carry a Bible. They tell you don't pass out a track. Who are they to tell us what to do? We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. That's who we are. Now let's, yeah, it's against your law. Whose law? This gospel is going all over the world. And God is reaching into the hearts of multitudes. Why are we so backward about being forward? God wants us to shine in this hour. Amen? He said, lift up around your eyes around about you. Come on, get your eyes up and you will see. They all gather themselves. People are coming to you. Your sons are coming from afar. And your daughters shall be carried and nursed in their arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. <laughs> God wants your face to shine with his glory. God wants you to declare to everybody around about you that you are a full-time believer. Amen? I'm not talking about just myself. Listen, this has been my experience over the years. I have so much fun with people coming up. Who are you anyhow? What what are you? Who do you? What's happening? What's different about you? I'll tell you what's different. It's Jesus. And that's what that motto of this church has been for years. We would see Jesus. People are not looking for your religious stuff. They're not looking for your little jargon. They want to know about a real living Christ inside of you. Amen. I'm talking to a family now. I'm talking to the household of faith. I'm talking to you that God wants you to get your light out there. Amen. I'm I'm not through with you yet because God said they're coming. Multitudes are coming. Listen, I'm going to bring people to you, and I'm going to bring you the abundance of wealth. The sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall the nations come with their treasures. Let me just say this to Shiloh. This is my home, and I'm not afraid to tell you this. 
God wants to do something powerful in lo on loosing and, li and liberating the funds that are needed to run this work for the kingdom of God. How many years ago was it, Brother David, we stood out here on the sidewalk with the, the wizard? About 79 or 80, something like that? Let's see, Sister Violet knows she was here. I was, <laughs> anyhow, it's quite a while ago, right? Amen. We had no idea. We had no idea how God would do it. We stood out here on the sidewalk and talked to the old wizard, and uh, he was so drunk he couldn't hardly tell what day it was. Thank God. <laughs> he was ready to deal. <laughs> and in five minutes, God touched his heart, and we shook hands out here on a deal. The only problem was we didn't have any money. And we told him we'd pay him X many dollars for this place, and, and uh, he said, okay. But God had set it up. And I had met a banker two weeks before that in Ohio that is a chief officer that's a vice president of Wells Fargo International. And he's the guy that come to me in Ohio and said, hey, pastor, if you're ever in our area and you need any help, call me. And I happen to remember his name. <laughs> ha! Oh, glory to God. You know why this is just bubbling in me? Because I've just been writing about I'm telling the whole world about this. Because it's God, you see. I, what I'm saying to you, God is not limited. Amen. And uh, he took us to lunch. And we had to pay the ta taxi fare because he didn't have a wallet. <laughs> this guy <laughs> was moving from here to England to be the governor of many banks. And he didn't have a wallet. So we, I had to pay his taxi fare. He bought our lunch. That was good. But in that five or ten minutes that we talked, God put us together in a place where we weren't even supposed to do business, under the tablecloth. He was looking at, at Pastor David's financial sheet. He just shook his head. He said, well, okay. <laughs> we don't have any money, but we're going to pay, you know, X about a million. Was, How much do you need? Well, we need a million dollars. Good deal. Shook our hands, and that was it. Done. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you're here today. That's why you're sitting in this beautiful building. Little did we know, there were 11 bars in here, and there was all kinds of demons to chase out of here, I'm telling you. But it's, it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. What is God going to do with us in the days ahead? God's going to challenge every one of you to loosen up and let's start giving like we've never given before. Listen, it's all going to be left here anyhow. You're not going to carry nothing with you. It's going to be left here. Let's get it in the kingdom. Make your investment. Not for me, not for pastors, not for anybody else, for Jesus. We're doing it as unto the Lord. But I want this house to hear me. We need some glorious liberation in this whole area. We need some help financially. Now, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm an old pastor. I'm just talking Sunday morning. <laughs> Where was I? Listen, multitudes are coming to you. They're coming to you. Camels are coming. I don't know what you're going to do with them, but they're coming. <laughs> Young, <laughs> I'd rather have camels than donkeys anyhow. Come on. All the, men, <laughs> all the men from the land of Sheba. You know where that is? Ethiopia. We've got our roots there. We've got an arm out there. We've got an investment in Ethiopia. God said, I'm bringing them. So these Ethiopians are going to start bringing some finance back in here. Come on. And they shall come bringing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. That's the pastoral tribes. The rams of Nabioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar. And my glorious house I will glorify. Now here's what the Lord is saying. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
And this is the light that came into the world. But men love darkness rather than the light. But Jesus said, I have made you the light of the world. I have set you here to be a beacon as a city on a hill. God said, I put you here to radiate my glory. And folks, the history of Shiloh has reached out all over the world. I know, I've been in most of these countries where the glory of God and the message of God's house in this place went, went forth and ministries and, and prophetic ministries that have gone forth and God has confirmed that word everywhere we've been. Amen. Amen. That word is alive. And the investment that you made, Portia, the songs you've sung, the, the worship, the glory, the presence of God that have gone out of this house, I'll tell you, we can't begin to even, even understand. And many of you folks coming into the house this morning may not even know these things about Shiloh, but I'm telling you today, God has ordained an awesome in-gathering, an awesome time of change, and we're going to see everything we need to meet the challenges of this coming year. Amen? Amen. Why? As your pastor Patrick's already said, I'm a believer, and we're going to be believers. We're going to be tested in all that we believe, but it's all right, because it's sure the Word of God is forever. As for God, His way is perfect, and the Word of the Lord is sure. He is a buckler, a mighty buckler unto all who put their trust in Him. Now, turn your light outward. This is what the Holy Spirit's saying to this house. I don't want you just shining in on each other. I don't want you to take your lampstand and put it under a bushel. Now, what does that mean? Hiding your light under a bushel, listen carefully now, for you that are in the commercial world, this represents commerce. A bushel represents commerce, okay? Worldly trade, a bushel. Always in the Bible, you'll understand that. Its measure, it speaks of of worldly commerce. God, Jesus said, don't hide your light under that bushel. Don't try to hide your light just so you can get ahead commercially. Yeah. No. Or don't put your light under a bed. Now, that's to me sounds so simply ridiculous. Why would you put a burning candle under your bed? I think that's kind of dangerous, don't you? Talk about a hot seat. I mean, that could be serious. Listen, that's what Jesus is saying. Get your light up on a candlestick. Put it up there on a candlestick where the whole house, get it now, the whole house will see it. Salvation is a household word. This year, I'm prophesying to you, God is going to bring your children in. God is going to bring your wayward spouses back. God is going to turn backsliders back by the, by the multitudes. Hear me. Do you believe this? Are you grabbing this? I'm talking to you by the word of the Lord today. God said, get your light up and turn your light outward. Let me show you what the word of God said on this. This is powerful. You see, in the beginning was the word. In every new beginning is a word. God doesn't do anything till he tells you something. Before God acts, he speaks. He said that, didn't he? The Lord God will not do anything except he first reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Now, if you don't know, you need a teacher. If you know and don't do, you need a prophet. <laughs> Here's what he said. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord that searches all the rooms of the belly. <laughs> I didn't know my belly had rooms. I, had, I know I had a lot of room in my belly, but anyhow. <laughs> all, <laughs> all, <laughs> all the rooms of the belly, various secret chambers of the heart. God's Spirit, the Spirit of man, is the candle of the Lord that searches you on the inside, shines into the inner recesses, the dark areas of your life, if you'll let God shine inside of you, let the light, that's what David said, oh God, search me, O oh Lord. Search my inner being. 
Try me, O God. Know my heart. Search me, O God. Have you prayed that prayer lately? God said, if you do, I'll turn the light on. I'll not only turn the light on the inside of you, but listen carefully to me. It's time for Shiloh to turn its light outward. We've been taken up with everything we're doing here. We've been taken up with our worship. We've been taken up with our our teaching and our preaching and our, our school, everything else, which is all wonderful. But God's purpose is not for us just to glory in this and go into a navel gazing mode. He said, I want you to turn your light outward. When we leave this house this morning, we're going to go out of different people than we came. We're going to go out of here and shine in this world. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Start listening to those holy nudges of the Lord when he said witness to that person. Share Jesus with that person. They may be as mean as a bulldog. It don't matter. Just tell them that Jesus loves them. Let them see the love of Jesus in you. I'm telling you, it pays to keep your face lit up. I was flying home from from Africa. I was in, Ni- let's see, where were we? In Nairobi. <laughs> I had my ticket ready to get on the plane. We waited there. Delay, delay, delay. Brother David knows we've had several of those in China. But they, though there they hijacked the plane. But here, we, <laughs> we're in, in Nairobi, and the plane was supposed to come from Amsterdam, pick us up, it didn't show up. Anyhow, eventually they finally said it's canceled. They tried to take off three times, and they broke down three times in the air, just they had to turn around and go back. Now, thank God he went back. <laughs> so we, we were shuttled on to another flight. We're on, I have to go a ra- different route, and uh, the Lord orders our steps and our stops. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> I got a ticket from, the, from them to get on Kenyan Airlines. And so my friend that was with me, he's the sharp guy, and uh, I raised him in our church. Anyhow, he jumped ahead of me, and he went to the counter and said, do you, have, do you have an upgrade available? I said, we have one seat left in business class. And they said, you can have it for 500 bucks. He said, I'll take it. So he puts his 500 bucks down, and uh, he's glorying over me. Sorry, Pastor. He said, this, this, just one seat. That's all I had. And I knew you wanted me to have it. And so <laughs> I said, yeah. Yes, sir. I said, okay, Lord. And the Lord said, just be quiet. I'm working for you. So I sat down with the rest of the folks in the peon section back here. And we're, pardon me, but that's, I ride there most of the time. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I look up, and there's this precious African-American attendant. She's a, she's a blessed person. I can see Jesus on her face. I said, I'm going to go talk to her about Jesus. She is the chief stewardess or flight attendant, okay? She's the, what they call the purser. And I went over there, and I started talking. I said, I said, you Christian, Hallelujah! And I said, yeah, I guess you are. I touched a hot wire there. And, uh, <laughs> and she said, and who are you? And I said, I'm Moses. Oh, I'm <laughs> Moses. <laughs> what are you doing here? I said, oh, we've been preaching here at Nairobi Lighthouse. She said, oh, I know Nairobi Lighthouse. That's my brother over there. And then blah, blah, blah. I said, hallelujah again. And by now we're into a very deep conversation. But I noticed the plane is delayed, delayed, delayed. It's not going we're supposed to take off. She said to me, finally, she says, you know what? We've been waiting for this one person. Get on. And they, it's in the first class, in the business class. She said, where are you sitting? I said, oh, I'm back in there. She says, go get your stuff and move up in here. We're good. We got to go. <laughs> we had a camp meeting. And then she gives me a, the, the best seat in the house. I mean, it was right there in the quiet, right in the corner, stretch out on that bed. It just laid out. And I, I couldn't resist the temptation of walking around and greeting my brother up there in the front. <laughs> How you doing, Dave? He said, what are you doing back here? I said, oh, I live here. I said, I'm back in this corner back over here. He said, how did you do that? He said, how much did it cost you? I said, oh, just a smile. 
That's all you need. Listen, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? When Moses instructed Aaron to light the seven lamps in the holy place, watch this. According to the Word of God, Numbers chapter 8, verses 1, 2, and 3, here's what he said. He was to arrange the lamps. He was to arrange the lamps that they shine outward. The lamps in the holy place were arranged to shine outward. Say outward. Folks, Shiloh, it's time to turn around and let our light shine outward. We, ha we can have a wonderful time here commiserating with one another, scratching each other's back and patting on, say what a beautiful person you are, but that's not God's ultimate purpose. His purpose is for you to get your light shining in here. We're going to fill you up with fresh oil. You're going to go out to the world ready and aimed and armed and full of the glory of God. Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And God said, don't you put a veil over your face. Don't you cover up that glory. Stop assuming an expression that doesn't come from within you. You are a child of God. You are the light of the world. You are to shine in this present world of darkness. In the beginning was the Word, and God spoke it light, and He said, let there be light. This was the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. As I said before, God's Spirit is in you. Listen, God is getting you ready for that which, is all, which He has already ready for you. Your eye hasn't seen it, your ear hasn't heard it, neither has it entered into your heart the things which God has already prepared for them that love Him. Don't put a period there, put a comma. But, but he says, but he has revealed them to us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2, you can read it, 9 through 16. And this is what God wants us to hear today. God has brought you to this house to illuminate you. God has brought you in this house to charge you with his glory. Listen, you can't walk with Jesus without it showing up on your face. Even those old rascals, those, those fishermen that walk with Jesus, that were forever, you know, worrying about who's going to be the boss and who's going to sit on what, what side of Jesus and all of that. The Bible said other people took notice of them. They took notice of them that they had been with Jesus. What was it? Come on. What was it? It was the glory of God the transferable glory of God, the transcending glory of God. And God wants to illuminate us in this present world. Amen. I'm going to show you from the Word of God how important this really is. Now, I've got a whole lot here to say and a very short time to say it. If Christ has lighted you, as I said, if He's turned the light on in you, then please, do it with an open face. Let the world see. We, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are being changed from glory to glory to glory, like unto His glorious image. Amen? This is the message of God. If we walk in His light, there's no darkness in us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are a city on a hill that can be hid. God put Shiloh here in his plan and his purpose beyond our comprehension. Listen to me. There are multitudes of people that have been touched by the Word of God in this house. There are multitudes that are unconnected, disconnected today. And they've had the light. They've had light. They've had an, a, a, an introduction to the glory of God. They'll never be the same. They may go out here and wander around, and, and, uh, but let me tell you, God's fixing to bring an awesome restoration to the house. We're going to see multitudes. Listen to me. The biggest revival we've ever seen is going to happen among our children, 
among our youth, and a whole bunch of AWOL people. They're out there hiding in the woods. They're out there passing this church, feeling the vibes as they go by. They know they should be here, but somehow the enemy has restrained them. They've got tangled up. They put their light under a bushel, or they put it under the bed, whatever the case is. But let me tell you today, the Lord's calling us back into a place where we're going to let our light shine. You are going to be a witness. You're going to bring people to this house. You're going to go to your neighbors and say, it's time for you to come back to Jesus. Folks, I'm telling you the truth. I don't have to go 10 feet hardly until I run into somebody. I did this morning, uh, early in this morning at where I was having my coffee. There's a lady that says, well, who are you? What, what are you doing? There's something about you. Have you been here before? I said, oh, yeah, I've been here before. I've been here lots of times. But the major thing is, she, you see, she was seeing something that is more than just me. It's the glory of God. Tell me about what you do. I said, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm telling people like you to come to Jesus. I'm, and, and that's my business. And folks, I'm telling you, you, I hardly ever, ever have anybody turn me down. They're so ready. This earth is ready. The harvest is white. Do you know, do you know what shows the harvest is ready? Think about it. It's the chaff. You don't see the wheat turning white. You see the chaff turning white. See, we're not going after chaff. We're going after wheat. But it's the chaff that tells us the wheat is ripe. It's the world today that's telling us the harvest is ripe. Do you, do you get the analogy? Do you get it? Think about it. Will you let it soak into you and realize that it's your neighbors around about you that's already predicting Jesus Christ is coming in a mighty harvest time? You see, we're coming into a season of harvest. We're going to see harvest in Shiloh like we haven't seen it ever. It's going to happen, folks, because this is our year of change. Amen? Amen. All three of you believe it. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh, hallelujah. I just feel God here this morning. I don't know. There's so much here. Paul said in his closing statements in Acts chapter 28, verse 16, <clears throat> he's rehearsing his vision for the third time in the book of Acts. Paul's conversion is mentioned. And he's standing before the king, King Agrippa. And he's giving his testimony. And he said, O oh, king, I was not disobedient to that heavenly vision. The Lord that called me said, listen to these words, I'm going to give you power to open men's eyes. I'm going to give you power to open men's eyes and turn their hearts from darkness to light. Oh my God. What politician wouldn't give his right arm for that kind of power? But we have it. It's ours. It's Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. And since he's in you, let him come out of you. Because when Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Are you a candidate for that kind of glory? All right. I want you to stand with me, please. And if you want to hear some more of this, stay. <coughs> I'm going to hit it again. Yeah, two more times, Pastor David has to suffer this. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's always stuck by me, no matter where we've been. And, and let me tell you, we have an incredible God. John Patterson, is that you? I want you to come on up here and stand with me, okay, right here in the front. And there are many more of you here this morning that have been touched by God. The Lord's already touched your life. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to expect a whole lot of time. But John, I want you to stand here. This, this, guy's, this guy's got a vision. And it, it won't quit. And he bugs me. He bugs me. He bugs me. He keeps bugging me. Every once in a while, I get an email from him. I'm not going to tell you what he said yet. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You see, I'm a believer. Brother Archie, come on up here with your wife. 
These are, these are solid old saints of God. John and Nina, come on, Nina. I want you people to stand with us this morning. Brother Duggins, come over. Bob, Derek, stand with us here. Pastor David's already here. I'm not just calling out people just to be, be cute, but I'm just here to tell you, when you look at people like Steve, come on, Steve and Portia, and, and these are people that have stood in the gap. Now, I'm asking you, these are, pa there's many more, the mother overall. <laughs> I love her. I just love her. She's very special. Sister Violet, come over here. I want just I, I just want to touch you. I just want to I just want to say how great God is. Manny, come on up here. You just you are just a part of this picture. Now I'm not trying to pick people out. Mike, come on. And there are there are people that I know, people that we can connect with. Pastor Javier, you stand of course, you know you're part of this thing, Pastor David. You you guys are part of this whole thing. Listen. I am today, I'm asking you today, if you want your light lit, do you want to be a, a bright, shining light for the kingdom of God? That's all I'm asking you to do. If you mean business, then you shouldn't be hesitating. You should be down here already, right now. Amen. I mean that sincerely. Come on. You don't need a special invitation. I'm not going to call your names, but I know you're here, and I know you need to be here. Come on, right now. You want to be a light. You want to be a light. You just don't want to hide your light anymore. You're not going to cover up. Come on, right close. We just need you up here close where we can pray for you. We can touch you. You're special people of God. Amen. The glory of the Lord is going to rest upon you. And you don't listen. Come on up close. Come on up. Come on up here, Jim. Amen. You know you belong here. Amen. And we're going to believe God. We're going to believe God. Listen, come on up. Come on. Don't stand back there. You belong up here. Come on. We'll fill this altar. We got plenty of room. And we're going to take just a couple minutes, but we're going to pray. And we're going to believe God. I want you to put your hand on somebody beside you. Put your hand on their shoulder. We're going to pray for each other. And we're going to ask God to light the light. We're going to ask God to light your light, to light up your life and let the glory of God be seen on your face, and don't you try to cover it up anymore. Let the glory of God shine through you to this generation, hallelujah, to our city. We're turning our light outward, amen? We're turning our light outward, and we're reaching out to our community, to our city, wherever you are, touch somebody, and we're gonna pray together Father, light up our light today. Let the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus come upon each one, Lord. And may this day be a turning point in every life. May this day be a changing point. May this day be the day, Lord God, when we see a dramatic change in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God shine upon our brothers and sisters, Lord. Let the glory of God come upon them. Hallelujah. Oh, bless Brother Patterson over here. Hallelujah. God love you, dear folks. I want to hug you. <laughs> God bless you, Brother Bill. I love you, dear. God bless you. I am so proud of you folks. God, this is a great day. Amen. And I, I just know the Lord has good things. We're going to come back and we're going to have some time together. Yeah. We're not in a hurry, okay? Yeah. We're going to sit down and eat a little bit of salt. So God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. Those prayers, Brother Manny, those prayers of, of, of Rene and you have, have been heard. And your family, God loves you. And he's going to bring your family into a whole new dimension of glory this year. Amen. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for Linda. Thank you, Lord, for these precious folks. Let the hand of the Lord be upon them for good. Let the glory of God prevail. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Alaba, Rosa Capanda, Namahaya. Amen, Derek. God's called you to be a lamplighter. God's going to cause you to see the necessity of putting a flame back into the children of God. We're not going to settle for anything less. Hallelujah. Haparaba Koshaba. Come on. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Fresh oil. Fresh oil from the throne. Fresh oil from the throne. Let the glory of God rest upon your children, Lord. Come on, Rabba, Hata, Rabba. Oh, yeah, Rabba, see, come on. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, Shia. Come on, Holy Spirit. 